Fire up the hamster wheels, brother. Who is this someone else that Mukuro was killed as? Was it Sayaka Maizono? Junko Enoshima? Leon Kuwata? Chihiro Fujisaki? Mondo Owada? Kiyotaka Ishimaru? Kifumi Yamada? Celestia Lu? <laughs> or maybe Sakura Ogami? No, no, no. There's no way anyone was murdered twice. Why are you spamming? He doesn't know. I do know. Who is this someone? And was it Sajunko and Oshima? Wait, shit. I wanted to line up the injuries. Never mind. Go back to spamming. He doesn't know. Who is? What does it say on the fatal wound? Fatal injury thing. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Was it Sayaka Maizono? Maybe I have to do it the other way around. Leon Kuwata, Chihiro Mondo, Kiyotaki Fumi, Celestial, or maybe. No, no, there's no way anyone was murdered. No, that's wrong. Junko, wasn't her fatal injury pretty similar to Mukuro's? What do you mean? She got the big poke. Well, remember what happened to her? <clears throat> she was impaled by a bunch of spears all over her body. And Mukuro died from a number of wounds across her body. When you compare that to the stab wounds Junko suffered, can those similarities match? Yes. And now it explains why Junko is face is blocked away in all four of the pictures. Because it doesn't match what we would think Junko's face is. That explains why those two bodies are actually. But I still don't get same. how they did. So let this. me see if I have this straight. Junko, or someone going by that name, was stabbed to death with multiple spears. Then her body was kept in the bio lab for however long before being dragged out again. Only this time, it was presented as the corpse of one Mukuro Ikusaba. It all matches up, right? Those wounds Junko suffered could easily be these same injuries. But why would Mukuro be Junko it's at the really start? really true? Mm. Mukuro and Junko are the same person? Wait. So then, what does it all mean? It means that there haven't been 10 victims, but nine. Which also means that among the people we thought were dead, one is still alive. And that's the true identity of the mastermind? Who is it? Who's behind all this? We already know the answer to that. No, you Ooh, dumb girl. bitch. You have it backwards. <laughs> Have it, so Toko. You have it backwards. So Mukuro is still alive. She's gotta be. A little silence. Then I must be right. I'm right, aren't I? Mukuro alive? The one that's still alive is Mukuro. But can we really believe that? Oh, the hype ass music. because her profile has her measurements, right? The corpse match. Yeah, the, we know the corpse matches the That's right. She made it look like Junko's body was her. So the 
Mastermind's true identity is... Mukuro! What do you say, Monokuma? Do you give up? Mm. Oh, shit. I like that you... Hmm, <laughs> was orange. The body we found in the garden... It wasn't Mukuro. No, that's wrong. Break yourselves no, upon my body. The body we found in the garden was Mukuro. That's one thing we can be sure of. The body's appearance and measurements are consistent with her records. Right, Kyoko? She was five foot six inches tall and weighed 97 pounds. Her vitals were 31, 21, 32. Why do they call it her vitals and not her measurements? Like, is that actually a term for... I've never heard it referred to as vitals before. And then there's the matter of the Fenrir tattoo. Her vital measurements. So there's no question it's her. I guess. Vitals just makes me think of like blood pressure and insulin and all that shit. Not your fucking bust waist hip measurements. But if Mukuro's not the mastermind, then who's actually still alive? Someone made it look like they've died, but they're actually still alive. There's only one person it could be. Makoto, it's you! You fucker! It's gotta be Junko, dude. Here's my answer. Junko is still alive. It's the only possibility. Are you sure about that? Huh? I admit, since Mukuro is undoubtedly dead, Junko does seem to be the only other explanation. But we saw her get impaled. She died right before our very eyes. If Junko were still alive, the death we saw would had to have been some kind of charade. But you yourself confirmed she was dead, did you not? Now that you mention it, I gently placed my hand on Junko's lifeless body. I touched her wrist to check for a pulse like they do in movies and stuff, but she really is dead. There wasn't anything else to say. She was gone. I did check, absolutely, and I can say for sure. She was dead. There's no question. Junko was dead. So... The idea that she's still alive. It must be wrong. Then you're withdrawing your previous statement? <laughs> I know you gave it your best shot, but too bad. I guess your conclusion was a dud. <laughs> too bad, too bad. This case hasn't been decided just yet. Oh? You haven't given up already. Have you, Makoto? Huh? No, of course not. There's no way I'd give up that easy. That's all well and good, but how do you intend to solve the problem standing in your way? Junko absolutely died. Mukuro absolutely died. Then both of them are dead, right? There can't be any kind of survivor story. I think we need to look at this from the opposite direction. Huh? The opposite direction? Let's assume Junko is still alive. If so, how could she have survived? How could Junko have survived? I checked her. She was dead. I'm sure of it. But still, if she were alive somehow, could it be that Junko's not the one that died? It wasn't... Yeah, I thought we already said this like five minutes ago. Hello? Maybe she used some sort of trick. Oh shit, another hangman's gambit. Oh shit. Uh. Shit. <laughs> uh. Uh, PC. Uh, prescription, Kappa. It's not in. Time to guess until I get a letter.
R. Man, I'm usually good at the Hangman's Gambit, but now I'm a scrub. Replicate. Where's an A, dude? Or an I? It's not replicate. There's no I, and that doesn't even fit the letters. Replace? Replaced. Now I understand. What if she switched places with someone else? S switch places? That's right. Before the spears could kill her, she got someone to take her place. Specifically, Mukuro Ikusaba. Then that would make it Mukuro's corpse that showed up later. Which is why the body's height and weight and everything match Mukuro's profile, right? I don't know anything about this switching places thing, but... That had to be Junko who got stabbed to death, right? Yeah, you're saying they switched? When could they even have done that? Right when she was uh, about to die? Like she used some kind of ninja replacement technique? Good point. There's just no way they could have switched like that. So maybe the whole idea is wrong. There has to be some way. I need to figure out how to explain how they could have switched. After? The beginning doesn't really make sense. And moment of death, he'd have to do like Toko said ninjutsu shit. Nope, I lose. It's a ghost! It's the Illuminati! <laughs> shit! Game shit. over, bro. Game over, man. I refuse to give up yet. Maybe they switched at the beginning, but I don't know how that would make sense. That's it. That's oh, they randomized the order. That's cool. Switched at the beginning. The two of them may have switched places from the very beginning. What? From the beginning? Yes, from the moment we first met. If that's when they switch, then they wouldn't have had to switch at the moment of death, right? Why does that After make all, sense? The one we saw mm. at that point would have already been Mukuro. Uh, hold on. So you're saying the Junko we first met was actually Mukuro all along? But why? Then but are... why? I had like a normal conversation with her. When we first met, None of us knew who anyone else was. So Mukuro could have simply told us her name was Junko. And we never would have known the difference. That would easily allow the two of them to switch places from the very beginning. Wait, but Mukuro had a tattoo on the back of her hand, right? Junko never had any tattoo like that, did she? She could have hidden it with foundation or something like that. If she did, it likely melted away in the explosion. In the fake nails the match. tattoo after the body was extinguished. Plus, there were the fake yeah. nails found on the hands of Mukuro's body. They were the same fake red nails she was wearing when we all met for the first time. But if she really did use foundation... Correct. 
Even if there was no tattoo on her hand, I couldn't say for certain it wasn't Mukula. So I'm glad nobody noticed that glaring hole when we were trying to figure out who attacked Makoto. But too bad for you, Monokuma. You can't deny it anymore. Wait, so this whole thing was a setup from the very beginning? If that's true, it was quite an elaborate plan to be sure, making it look like Mukuro was Junko. The reason such an elaborate plan was possible is because the two of them were working together. So Mukuro, the ultimate despair, teamed up with someone like her. In other words, it would be fair to say that Junko herself was also the ultimate despair. What's wrong? Lost the will to fight back? I think he's just afraid. Afraid? What's that mean, afraid? Fear is only possible where hope is possible. I only have despair, so fear is an alien concept to me. Then why haven't you been saying anything? Because it's a bunch of nonsense. Junko's my secret identity. <laughs> As if. Then why did you try and protect Junko's real identity? I tried to protect her identity. When did I do that? So he still refuses to admit it, but he can try and deceive us all he wants. It doesn't matter because I've already figured it out. He tried to hide Junko's identity and not just once, but twice. The first time was during our latest investigation. <laughs> the group photos where you hide it, hit her face the whole time. Maybe the DVDs? I'm gonna say the photos. Nope, that's wrong. Shoot! It's gotta be the DVDs, right? I got it! Yee! While I was in the AV room, watching the DVD of our interviews with the headmaster. Flashbacks. sure I couldn't finish watching the video and the reason you did that is because you didn't want me to see the real Junko did you oh yeah if everyone was in that video of course Junko would have had to show up and if Makoto saw the real Junko it would have been totally obvious that the Junko we met was an imposter but that whole power outage thing was just a fluke no, it wasn't a fluke. The Mastermind definitely orchestrated the power outage. And that's not the only time they tried to hide Junko's identity. The Mastermind tried to cover up one other piece of evidence. I gotta reveal that. More rhythm game. Final strike. That's impossible. Uh, 
it's got to be the group photo, right? This should prove it. This should prove it. Yeah. The video wasn't the only thing you tried to cover up. You did the same thing with this group photo. Uh, uh oh. I noticed it just a little while ago when we were all comparing the photos we'd gotten. In all the photos, there's a certain similarity, an unusual circumstance. What, what's so unusual about them? The unusual circumstance common to all these pictures? The unusual circumstances. I got it! Junko's face. The one thing common to every single photo is that you can't see her face. Yeah, show them all again. It's hard to believe her face would just happen to be hidden in every single picture, don't you think? And on top of that, in this photo, you can see that Mukuro is clearly visible. So in other words, at that point, the two of them hadn't switched yet. With all that in mind, there's no doubt that the girl whose face is hidden here is the real Junko. Which is why you had to have pictures that didn't show her face. Because if we could have seen her face, then it would have clearly revealed that the Junko in the pictures wasn't the Junko that we knew. Xanadu! I believe everything Makoto Xanadu. said Xanadu! Junko and Mukuro switched places before we met either of them. So she killed Mukuro, who had taken her place, making it look like she died. And the real Junko is still alive. And she's the one behind this whole murderous situation. This killing game. She's the true mastermind and the ultimate despair. Xanadu times two! With this, the identity and the crimes of the mastermind have been exposed. No, no, no wait! Uh, hold on! Don't bother trying to deny it. There's no more room for debate. <clears throat> He's gonna you freak out, dude. Anywhere left to run. I'll prove everything. Right now. Right here. Right now. Right here. Right here. Right now. What was the identity of the ultimate fashionista who I met in the dining hall? That one, I guess? I don't have that many tokens. Oh, wait, there's, there's more here. That has to be the right token, I think. Act two. Stomp on me, daddy. Get killed. Rippy dip. Wow, no things to fill in in act two. X3, where did the mastermind keep Mukuro's body? Uh, the morgue biolab? Act 4. The mastermind attacked me with something. What was it? Gee, I wonder what it was. I can't quite remember what it was. Does anyone know what it was? When the masked mastermind attacked me, who was it that stopped them? That was Kyoko. That was your girl. After their surprise attack failed, the mastermind fled my room. Actually, I think that one goes there, and the one I put goes here, because that looks like her opening the door, and that looks like them getting the fuck out. What did the mastermind do with the mask after they took it off? Put it on the body. What was the condition of the dead body when I first found it in the garden? not blown up what was the condition wait what it's asking 
Oh, I was just dumb. I confused myself. I saw her opening it and then kaboom! Toko was surprisingly okay after getting fucking exploded. I couldn't identify the body because it got blown up. All right, let's see. Here's exactly what happened. We met the ultimate fashionista, Junko and Oshima, right after we all arrived here. But that wasn't the real Junko. The girl we saw before us was actually the 16th student who had taken Junko's place. And that girl's name was Mukuro Ikusaba. But it wasn't long before she died at the hands of Monokuma. In other words, the mastermind, Junko and Oshima. Her body was kept in a bio lab, which had been converted into a morgue, until Junko decided to put her body to use. Chick, chick, chick. Kish, kish, dun, dun, dun. Junko dragged the body I love these sound the effects, lab. dude using the tarp to carry her to the garden. She fabricated the murder to try and frame Kyoko, who proved to be one big thorn in her side. Meanwhile, she wanted us all to think Mukuro was still alive and hiding somewhere inside the school. So she put on a mask and then attacked me. making sure I'd gotten a good look at the mask, she left the room. Then she put the same mask on Mukuro's body. This was all to make us think the person who attacked me and the corpse were one in the same. She wanted us to believe the murder had only recently taken place. Boom. Finally, by strapping a bomb to the body, she was able to destroy any remaining evidence. She needed to hide the body's true identity. She had to make sure we didn't find out it was actually the same person we'd met in the beginning. This is the truth behind Mukuro's murder, and the one who carried it all out is the true mastermind. The one controlling Monokuma. Me, Makoto Nayegi. Junko and Oshima. Boom! Complete! That's the whole story behind this incident. Well, what do you have to say to that? What? Are you broke? Roll credits, baby. You can't get out of this, so don't even try. Come on! It's time you finally revealed yourself! It's not like you're an endangered species or something. How long do you think Junko's like trying? didn't read lol? Give it up, Junko. The game's over. Over? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Did you really think the story would end once we reached the climax of the case? Mm -hmm. Wrong! There's still plenty more to go! Ooh. Yo, she just did ninjutsu.